The Jew saw them all, beat them all, and is now what he always was. All things are mortal but the Jew. All other forces pass, but he remains. What is the secret of his immortality? Hello and welcome to the Jew Function. So we're late. We had some technical difficulties, uh, calendars, assistants, all that fun stuff. But we're here. Seth. Hi, man. Hey, Leo. Shalom. Yeah, this so is good to see you. Um, I feel like uh, the frequency of our meeting is getting are get, is getting is it's going going higher, higher and higher. I don't know if it's a if it's a result of the times, I guess. But I'm grateful for that because I get to see you so 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 often. <laughs> so um so um look we uh we have uh we have a great guest today uh and we're, we're gonna in introduce her shortly i just want to say that uh we're starting this uh, episode today uh against the backdrop of some really i don't know what's the word it's um the world is not is not in a great place uh and <laughs> And when, every time we we say it here on this show, we think, "Well, that's you know, it's pretty bad." And then something, you know, <laughs> happens to push it a little closer to you know, there's that doomsday clock, right? That scientists keep keep, and and we've been like on the I think eleven fifty nine p.m. and thirty five seconds for the past decade. I think we've uh, inched a few more, you know, inch closer to midnight, um, which which is that. Um, well, I don't know what happens uh, on doomsday, but uh, that's what scientists say is is uh, you know might happen if we don't get our um, act together. And I hope that we're getting our act together. We're speaking. The good news is that we're speaking to more and more people who seem to feel the same pressure, but not everyone is. Uh, you know, at least here in Israel, uh, people are. Uh, some people, at least, uh, certain factions are putting a lot of money into separating the people, creating more splits and schisms and rifts. And we know uh, that this this leads in, uh, to one place and one place only. Uh, also in the U.S., I know there's uh, everything is getting polarized more and more ahead of the election. And uh, it seems like the whole world is is, is gearing up to take sides on, a, on this, like, you know, on two sides of a, of a, of a huge uh, field, like in the old... You know the old uh, these old war scenes, and then then someone's gonna a cannon is gonna go off, and everybody's just gonna run towards each other. I just hope we can get everybody to hug when they meet <laughs> and not do something else. Uh, you feel is that is is that feeling uh, true for the states as well, or is it only here in Israel? You know, we have uh, these these uh, situations. For example, in New York, where you have to it's illegal to use. Uh, plastic straw but you get a paper straw wrapped in plastic in a plastic cup you know so if you or or like you put your recycling you know you put your uh i don't know one thing in recycling but you walk down the street of new york and just mountains of garbage so what we what we do is like we find one thing that we can do that feels like we're making a difference. It kind of calms us down. But if you look at, for example, like the CO2 emissions of China, it like wipes out any changes that, that all of the solar in the U S and all of the wind in the U S it's not, we're not talking about climate here, but the point is that, um, you know, we, 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 we identify some problem and we try and do something about it. We stabilize ourselves there. And if we're lucky enough that the light shines on us there and shows us a, a bigger picture of reality, um, then like you see the problem is even bigger than you thought. And then you work on it there. And then if you're lucky, because if you're not lucky, you stay in the dark and we just keep, you know, running around in our little sandbox. But if you're, you know, there's a great quote by uh, the Rabash. I'm sure it's, you know, the Kabbalist, the Rabash, and I'm sure it goes back to other places. I don't remember. I don't know where, but, but he says before a person can leave slavery in Egypt, he has to feel that he, he has to like be in slavery in Egypt first. And uh, yeah. if we, we, we just, call it rec recognition of evil, we call it that the yeah, diagnosis. If we're, just, if we're just running around and don't realize 
the you know what's really going on um what sandbox we're trapped in what world we're in what are the players in the world we're in you know are we kidding ourselves about who the people are that we're we're dealing with on a regular basis um then we don't have a chance to get out but if we do start to recognize it um then we do have a chance to once we feel that we are in exile then we can cry out because of the the the, un, the discomfort of the exile but if we're comfortable in exile and we got all you know then we have no need to leave uh, and i think that as much as um i still feel in the us that we don't realize the the big issues that we're dealing with you know we're dealing with this situation from october 7 and we're dealing with all different kind of um different anti-semitic things or different problems in the world but we haven't yet grasped the total integral nature i've got a friend sorry i'm taking more time than i expected here but it's 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 kind of got me going i have a friend who's dealing with some health issues and every day he's sending me, do you know the health system is corrupt? Do you know that the doctors are just selling the pharmaceuticals? And you know the pharmaceutical companies are this. And you know that they don't teach met, uh, nutrition. Um, and he's right. But that, that's just medic, medicine. Now look at education. Now look at politics. Now look at you know, every single um, avenue in society. And we'll find that the whole thing is broken. And so then where do we turn? Well, it's, it's a good question. Uh, I think um, um, maybe today's guest is going to bring another perspective because she's not from Israel. She's not from the USA. She's actually from the UK. And I think uh, um, uh, I'm, I'm actually looking forward to having this conversation because uh, with, specifically with her, and, and you'll, you'll understand exactly why, because... Uh, um, when we talk about the, the Jew function, when we talk about the, the role of the Jews in the world and the system or in the network of humanity, uh, we understand that it doesn't matter where, whether you you have a, a, a religious belief or not, uh, it's all linked back to this, you know, one book that everybody, um, you know, the first book everybody had, right? The first book that was printed and everybody had, that was the Bible. It's, it was that story. And uh, it seems like were part of this big uh, cinematic uh, event that, that's unfolding that started with this book and then um, uh, later branched into um, Christianity and then branched into Islam. And now all these pieces are coming together. These three big branches are coming together. And, and so we can't look at this problem and the root causes of it uh, and the systemic solution to it without examining uh that th that that relationship right which which um harkens all the way back to uh, to the beginning of of civilization as we call it so uh, uh i'm i'm very happy that we were able to um to to bring to this uh, show today uh, uh a, a very special person i actually uh, had a chance to speak with her on the phone before before the show uh, a few weeks back and i was really excited about it to, to, just to hear her just first of all, her, her great energy uh, and her passion, and uh, she's she's from as I said, she's from the UK, and together with her husband uh, Timothy Gutman, she um, um, I, I think they started it. Or she, she'll correct me, but they started or they're part of this uh, the Christian Action Against Anti-Semitism, and it's dedicated to uh, the mission of raising up a voice within the Christians of the UK to stand with the Jewish people, speak of love and solidarity. And it it it's perfect. It's exactly what we're trying to to talk about here. Um, so I'm really really happy to uh, invite Reverend uh, Haley Ace, who uh, who is actually in her car. She stopped everything in the middle of God knows where to be with us. So Reverend Haley, please join us. Hi, hi guys. Thank you hi, so much for, for having me. Normally I am in a nice office, but we're doing it raw. And it made me laugh when you were talking about fast food because I am outside a KFC. And in, in England, though, you do have paper on the straws. But it's a very interesting thing that you said because if you think about how much rubbish there is in the world, it's not really 
really straws that are the problem. But anyway, yeah. side point just made me think <laughs> of that. No, it's exactly, no, no, no. Because we all hate telling. those paper straws, by the way. We all hate them, but uh... we all hate them. Yes, <laughs> exactly, exactly. And we know they're not solving any problem, but um, yes. Uh, so uh, you you're on your way back home from some big event. Just tell us where where you are. Just yeah, so everybody understands where okay, you are. Okay, so I am in North London. I'm actually very close to a Jewish area in Golders Green. Um, in North London. And I just went to a, a big synagogue in St. John's Wood, which is one of the biggest in London. And we had an event marking six months since October the 7th, since that dark, evil day. And and if that wasn't bad enough, October the 7th, then to see the world's response and the cruelty and the gaslighting and the just the appropriation of Jewish pain and experience, Jewish history, Jewish everything. And to see the attack on the jury worldwide has been horrific to watch as, as somebody who loves and stands with the Jewish people, who loves Israel. And, and I always like to caveat because I know Christian history when it comes to the treat of the Jewish people and uh, with the forced conversions, with the pogroms, with the massacres, the Inquisition, I've done my research and I've been doing this work. Uh, we founded Christian Action Against Antisemitism and I know how awful Christianity has been in the main to the Jewish people, the silence during World War II. So I always say when I'm ever speaking to a Jewish audience, I'm not, I don't proselytize. We are a non-proselytizing organization towards the Jewish community. Um, and, you know, Christians do like to be evangelists. They, they like to do that sort of things, but we do not. We really see the Jewish people as they have their own covenant relationship with God. We respect that God gave the Jewish people the Torah, that um, he chose them and they chose him. And so we really come from that point of view and take it from the point of view that Christianity, in terms of what we believe, is a grafted in to something, is a heritage that is all there because of the Jewish people. So really we owe a debt of gratitude. We don't come in friendship in the guise of friendship, but really we're gonna pull out the, we're gonna try and convert you um, thing. We don't have any of that. We just wanna stand in true love and friendship. What? First of all, this, yeah. this is, you know, yeah, Seth, you wanna ask, I you just know, wanna what, say what that. What motivates so this? refreshing. You know, what? Yeah, it's very That's refreshing it. and I'm curious, yeah. uh, 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 it's great to uh, know we have some friends, but what? Do. uh, where does this come from? Why? Yeah, um, why? Well, first of all, okay, why and where? Of, why, why, and why, where? why? Why is this? A, a couple of things. I think first, because I'm actually not British. I'm a New Zealander. I'm a Maori from New Zealand. And so my mum is fully tribal. She wears the mukokowai, which is the tattoo on the chin. Um, and I was brought up in a tribal environment, very much with the tribal values. And my mum always taught me, you know, the first educator in your life is often your parents. And she always taught me about indigenous people, that we are the indigenous people of New Zealand, that our cousins and the indigenous people of Australia are the Aborigines, always went around the world. And it was always, and the Jewish people, the tribe of Judah, the Jews are the indigenous people of Israel. And this was always something that I grew up as an indigenous person understanding. And so it wasn't until I moved to Britain and I started sort of just seeing that people were denying that truth to the Jewish people. And that made me very cross as an indigenous person to another indigenous people. How dare anyone take away someone's indigenous right to their land. And I think for me and any of my tribe, when we land back into New Zealand, we take our shoes off, we feel like connected to the ground. It's really like a spiritual thing. We feel very like there's something about being in the water, being in the soil. You just feel this oneness. And 
I've spoken to many Indigenous people and they feel that about their land, where they came from. And so I can't imagine how painful and awful it must be for the Jewish people to constantly have to explain who they are and to constantly be on the defence because people are trying to take away your identity, take away the Jewish identity. No, you're white colonisers. No, you're really just escaped from Europe and don't recognise who the Jewish people are or where they came from. So that was the first thing. And, and yeah, then, go for it. Yeah, yeah, and no, then, so, no, ask Seth. Ask so so what, what, is there any difference, though, between um, the Mohawks or the Apaches, the Maori, the Israel? Is it all indigenous? Because you are, you know, you grabbed onto this one strongly so is there what specifically about so uh, so then the second one is i'm a christian so i was raised um by my parents were missionaries we left new zealand when i was a child and we moved to africa and we um, lived poorer than the people that we were trying to help because we really wanted to live like the people so that we could understand the issue so that we could try and help them and reach them. We didn't want to be these white looking people coming in like a savior syndrome. We're going to rescue you. We wanted to understand the people and, and work with them. And we had amazing things. Uh, there's a funny side story actually with, um, we didn't know that hippos, hippopotamuses were dangerous, for example. And my, and Maori people are very at one with the ocean. That it's it's kind of like a thing for us. And so my mum said, there's hippos, jump in, swim with them. So we did. We jumped in and we swam with this huge pod of hippos. And and on the on the beach, on the shore of Lake Victoria, the fishermen were screaming at us and we were like, it's fine. We're 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 moldy. We're from New Zealand. We are at one with the water. <laughs> and uh, so I think the hippos must have think, who are these white people? And they don't have any fear. We're not going to touch them. And so I was always given the correct theology about who the Jewish people were as well. That this is the Jewish people, the same Jewish people that exist today, are the covenant people of God. They are the chosen people for a specific. Um, tasked to be a blessing into the nation and they've done that and they are doing that and they constantly punch above their weight and in terms of Nobel Peace Prizes, inventions and just all of the beauty that they bring to the world. And then later on in my life, I started and it was really my husband, he started researching um, just Christian history because it's not something you're taught as a Christian. You normally just go straight to the Bible but you don't really look at history. You don't look at what the church has done in previous times. And so he started looking into it and was then thinking, now Nazi Germany, what religion were they? Why didn't they stop the, the um, Holocaust after you watch Schindler's List and it's very powerful? And then you see that Nazi Germany was a majority Christian country, 70% evangelical Lutherans. 30% Catholic, you know, give or take. And they were in the main completely silent during one of the worst atrocities in human history. And Christians are supposed to stand for love and peace and fighting for the oppressed and all of the good things and love in action. And where were they? And then when you start looking into how insidious this is, and then every generation seems to blame the Jews when the Jews never start a fight. They never start wars. They only bring good what is going on. And that really, that sense of injustice is what piqued me. So it was those two combinations of this is an illogical uh, attack on the Jewish people. And it's always been there. Why? There is no reason for it. So then I thought this is spiritual. Um, and I can't look away now. Now that I know this happens, I, I'm I'm 100 in, and I so, can't. So yeah, so we have a place to begin the conversation now that we understand that it's something spiritual about it. I think that's yeah. now we have common ground. Not now, but we have common ground for the uh, for the conversation. Yeah, great. 
So far away. Any questions? Well, Sorry, it's quite so, sunny here. I don't know. If no, no, it's okay. It's okay. You, you, you look great, and uh, I'm happy to, happy to see a sunny day in, in the UK. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> One off. Yeah, treasure it. Um, I think I think our question is usually we ask people, you know, what what do you think is the uh, you know the the root cause of this uh, this unique attitude toward the Jews? I I, I don't even want to say um, hate. Because it's not always hate, but it's definitely a se separate attitude toward this group of people. Uh, and mm. it's a tiny group in comparison, right? 0.2% of, of the world population has it's remained a, a tiny group, right? Throughout history, as other groups have grown or disappeared, this group in a weird way stayed almost uh, in the same size. Mm -hmm. what what did what, what did you find i mean do you how do you explain it how do you account for it we're curious to to, to know what you what you found well you yeah and i was hoping to find a reason and i kept looking and there is no reason that i could put it to so therefore when i um when i think of it in a spiritual way i think right it, i am um, somebody who believes in opposites i believe with there is light and dark good and evil right and wrong god and the enemy of god and the logical for me i put it down to god is real he chose a specific people for a specific covenant relationship that he loves like the apple of his eye that he is so committed to and the enemy doesn't like that and so because I, I actually think it's an attack on god attacking his people it's like the worst thing you can do to me is hurt my kids you know who has any power can... against and god's omnipotent though who has any yeah. power to do anything against god so i believe that it's uh, a spiritual thing inside people if they don't truly have god in them they genuinely hate hate his people and i know that sounds really awful because it's slow, there's it's a lot it of down slow, slow it down and say it again so for me i think that it's effectively godlessness if you you can't attack god but you can attack his beloved and that's the only logical thing that I have come to after years of thinking about this and researching and looking that you can't attack God. You can't get him, but you can poke him metaphorically by touching his precious people. And if you are a godless person, you are without love for the living God, it's easy you don't even most people don't even know they're doing it but i think there's a lot of darkness inside people and i do believe in dark forces and i think that motivates a lot of apathy and hatred so so maybe the question uh, the follow-up question on this would be why um a god who is loving who is as seth said omnipotent and omnipresent and can really do anything Right. Mm -hmm. what, why would he create the conditions for for such mm -hmm. hatred to be revealed, or why would he yep. allow it, or or you know what what like what's what? Let, let's go a step deeper. Let's let's uh, uh -huh. because we you know you and I we spoke a little bit and you know we we really see uh, we we see God uh, not not as a person that's kind of making God too small. Uh, we see yes. it as a, as a force of love. The highest force, the highest force in nature, right? So you have, you have all too. these kind of other forces uh, operating uh, in nature. It's a system with laws. Uh, a law is a force, right? That's that's working through the system. And if you look at nature, all the laws are are working usually to bring something to, toward a a favorable goal, an end goal, right? You plant an orange, and then it blossoms, and then you get an orange. Uh, the, mm -hmm. you, you you put a you you know you put a, a an egg and a sperm together and, and then you get you get a person or an animal whatever it is there's always processes always lead to something so we also yes. want, uh, you know we're trying to look at the system of humanity through the same perspective like take a take yeah. a, you know step up and, and look down at this huge petri dish what is happening why there are forces that work seemingly against God or God's 
beloved, as you said, why are there are those that work for it? What's the where is it going? You know, in, in your in your mind. Well, where is it going in terms of? I mean, I think I could just answer the first part of that question in terms of why. Maybe what maybe the simplistic way of saying it is like, why do bad things happen to good people? Maybe, maybe. I, I get this question a lot when you know when children sure. get cancer why does an innocent child a baby get cancer why do bad things happen and I do believe that the what makes humanity completely different to everything else in creation is we have choice a full choice of right and wrong um, good and bad and if we didn't have choice then we would never really be able to truly love because without choice we're just robots we're just instinct driven animals we, who uh, who go by their instinct to to procreate to eat to what find shelter but we are so much more than that being created in the image of god we actually have choice and so therefore we are given choice to make bad decisions and to make evil choices. And that is the way that I explain when bad things happen. Um, in terms of where it's going, going back to the sort of opening discussion that you guys were having, I think that what we're seeing and what we've seen for a long time in the world is, is a death of God in people's hearts. And a death of really having a motivation to live in a moral way or open to something greater than themselves because we've become very self-focused with self-help, self-love. And I'm not saying self-help is bad. You know, we all need to help ourselves. It's a good thing. But it's there's a lot of narcissism in the world where we've almost made ourselves very elevated and then we've made other human beings like gods celebrity culture with um social media how much it drives just social change and understanding even with israel why do 17 year olds on the street shout at my rallies and say free palestine jews are scum because they've seen it on tiktok not because they have any understanding about what they're actually saying so I think that really my view in terms of really, and I feel like I don't want to cut the conversation to the end, but I do think that time is very much ticking and we are like at that final point. When I, I was reading Ezekiel 37 the other day and it was about Gog and Magog and I was just reading, it just happened to be that part of my reading. And I thought, look, this book that is so, so sacred and so old, it's talking about things that it feels very current. It feels very like, I don't, I've never thought of myself as someone who is like a conspiracy theorist, but now I feel like I am starting to sound like one. Because I, I think there are dark forces and there is something going on. And what is the alliance going on with Russia and Iran and China? And why are people doing this to Israel? It doesn't make any sense. So I think that we're really in the final time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and we can get into um, uh, all these different kind of Daniel, Ezekiel, things in the Zohar about what, what's going to happen now with the children of Ishmael and the verse, the children of Esau and all these kind of things. But um, we'll have maybe in our next talk, but let's, let's, let's go yeah. incrementally so we, so we can build to it. Um, here's just a concept that, uh, that if it, the world, like, like, we can have this conversation. It's hard to have the conversation with someone we don't have common ground with, but we understand, for mm. example, like where are the women organizations coming out about what's going on there? Like where's the human rights organizations? Like when the U S 
had these wars in Afghanistan and Iraq and hundreds of thousands of people died. Like, where were these college protests? Where were, were these protests? When, uh, when Syria has been going through the civil war and hundreds of thousands of people die and millions of people are displaced, like, where's the outrage? Where's these protests? So it's clear to yeah. people like us that there's, um, it, it's not an even playing field. And that, no. right, so it's it's very clear, and we understand that Israel is judged completely differently. Uh, mm -hmm. And so let's try this on for a minute, that whatever happened, like for example, Israel, as much as you can say that war is humane, you could say Israel tries to conduct a humane war. Now, obviously war is not humane in any way, but yep. um, you can go in and just eradicate everyone, just just drop a bomb and finish it, right? Mm -hmm. Which has been done in in uh, you know in Germany and Japan and the you know Hawaii and different places. You drop a bomb and you kind of be done with it, yeah. uh, or you try and be more surgical about it. So, so let's imagine or just try this on that the way that the world looks at Israel now is how the is like how it's like a point which will 10x or 100x after that so the scrutiny that goes on now is kind of mm. is like the calculation and then after this is done the world will follow suit like what's acceptable what's not acceptable so now is this time of making all of these calculations like what will we accept as a world what is okay and israel has to deal with all of these painful scrutinies as God's people, as you said, like has to deal with the scrutinies, but it's on behalf, it's making these calculations on behalf of the whole world. Like, do we accept just dropping a bomb or must it be surgical? And if it's surgical, how surgical? And if it's like this, how must it be? And mm. once all these calculations are made, then the world will roll on and absorb those calculations and, and fulfill them in the same way that, you know, what the Jews came up with, the world took in and and um, you know took what happened there and all the way to Africa, right? Like you said, or to South America. Like in one way or another, those calculations that happen in the House of Israel uh, expand out ten x, hundred x, and of course they take on different shapes. Um, yeah. When they go where they're going, but that this time for the whole world is like a scrutiny of what do we accept. Uh, what what is the direction that we're willing to go in um, as humanity? And uh, what well, can can you speak something about that? Do you do you see something in that? I do. I think um, when I'm listening to you, I can totally see that. I th I kind of think two things really. When you're speaking, I think yes, absolutely. Israel's always and the Jewish people have always established great things that people that have then adopted but I also think on the other hand I don't see anyone else being scrutinized anywhere near anywhere near than what the IDF and Israel has to face and I don't know if that's something anyone else will adopt because it's almost impossible to have a new urban warfare combatant versus civilian ratio of two to one is unheard of um and i don't know if we the world will expect that standard applied everywhere and i, I hope it does i mean i hope it does because um we had richard kemp speak today at the at the rally and he was talking about the fact that the IDF are so surgical in how they go in and do things, but we're not seeing that applied anywhere else. We're not seeing any other criticism of any other country currently doing exactly the same thing, if not worse than Israel. So I don't know if the same standard will be applied everywhere else. Why, why do you think it would? No, no, let, let's not even talk about just the standard of in military, but just that the scrutinies that Israel has to go through are the scrutinies that, of humanity 
like the upcoming mm-hmm. scrutiny, like like the the light almost passes through this nation and needs to be sorted out. What's acceptable? What's not? How will we arrange yes. this? And then it flows into the rest of humanity. M- m- maybe uh, just to help that out a little bit. Please help uh, me because I thought it was clear before I started speaking. And once <laughs> I started speaking, it, like too many details came in, it became uh, not clear. Well, so so the the the, the thing is. Uh, as we said, when we look at uh, Jewish sages talk about um, Israel, um, its origin, and its destiny, uh, there is a, again a clear picture, uh, kind of forgotten yeah. uh, by you know by everyone, including the Jews. But uh, when uh, you know when when they were um, gathered around Abraham in Babylon uh, three and a half thousand years ago, uh, it was um, a, a world. Yeah, also in flux. I, I, I don't want to say exactly like today, but a world where people used to be very close and different uh, clans and tribes were, were able to coexist very peacefully. And suddenly there was an eruption of the, the human ego. It kind of went up mm-hmm. another degree and suddenly there was no there was no no communication. All right, there's the story of the Tower of Babel. It's a metaphor of that, right? It's, it's the inability mm-hmm. to suddenly feel the other, see the other, understand the other, be in their shoes, feel their needs and desires. And everybody was sort of like, we're trying to move away. Uh, but Abraham, who saw a different picture, he saw actually a purposeful event here, an opportunity to yeah. rise above the this growing ego and actually form bonds of love and understanding and care above the friction, above these forces that naturally push you apart. The people yeah. who assembled around him learned how to do that. They followed this law of love, love your friend as yourself, right? That, that idea. Uh, but it happens. Oh, I'm sorry. There's a, there's a barking dog here. I hope you don't. Um, don't worry. I've got dogs. It's fine. Oh, okay, good. So um, they, they, they followed him. And um, this group was called uh, Israel because it, in Hebrew, it's Yashar El, straight to the creator. Okay. The creator mm-hmm. is the force of love. You want to feel the force of love in you, around you, everywhere, you have to be a little bit like him, right? You have to Absolutely. reach sort of equivalence of form. Uh, and so this is this group was called Yashar El because all their desires were aimed at reaching that quality of love and bestowal. But the same letters can also be rearranged to, to read Li Rosh, which is my head, to be a head to the body of humanity. And the, the, the head is the wow. part that really makes the calculations. It's the one that's not just going after the belly like an animal, right? An animal, the head and the belly on the same level, right? I'm hungry, I'm eating. I, uh, you know, I want to procreate, I'm procreating, right? Everything is you know, immediate. There's no scrutiny here. There's no calculation. And yeah. a human is characterized by a head above the belly. And so this was, again, the same kind of idea that there's this, uh, this group that needs to function as that head. Again, it's not a matter of superiority or not. It's just you need that function in humanity. Of course, you need, yes. You need to come to it through free choice, as you said, through free will. Otherwise, we're just animals. There's no point in evolving monkeys to humans if you're not going to, you know, you know, give them the freedom of choice. So, yes. so the the whole thing is about reawakening this quality of the head uh, that has to act in love above the friction and the growing ego, and. Yeah, making this system kind of work in a more harmonious way, in line with these laws of the system, and mm. so what we're saying is that when we're not doing that, when we're not fulfilling this role, uh, and I'm not just talking about people in Israel per se. There's a lot of other people around the world. There's like ten lost tribes, and God knows how many people who have that desire, right? So it's not about what's yeah. your ID; it's about your desire. If you have a desire to be that then you probably are part of that, right? And so yes. that 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 function needs to reawaken and 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 act in humanity. And it's not doing yeah. it now. And that is the reason that's what that's what we're saying is the reason for this negative attitude toward the Jews. Throughout history, that negative attitude helped keep them together and kind of staying the course while everything the the system was you know maturing right the desire was ripening but now we're at a point where that's it it's done the world is interconnected it's one piece almost and now it needs to start working in our godliness needs needs to fill the whole system exactly and and someone needs to do it someone Mm -hmm. just needs to kickstart this process and and 
if if those people are not doing it then the reaction of the system the the reaction of the force of love will be to pressure them to do it that's yeah. really what what it comes down to um, yeah and, and 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 there's a lot of again there's a lot of text we're not inventing it's not like Seth and mine you know theory no absolutely absolutely I think that um what we do see is that uh, taking Israel from for as the example it is that which represents the freedom democracy life this love of life and understanding that relationship I'm not saying everyone in Israel has this spiritual awakening that we're talking about of course no country has that um, as yet um but I think when there is a country that has got this history with Abraham at the you know the spearhead of the beginning um which are those values of of love and also just following something greater than yourself because he had to choose um to follow and God then led him through wherever he was going to go and um he had to trust in him for you know his child and there was a actual relationship going on Israel seems to be this this sorting hat almost of 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 a of opinion almost like because you either are, it's weird because i don't know any other country where you are either pro something or you're anti i've never heard anyone say i'm anti new zealand or i'm anti kenya but i've heard so many people say i'm anti israel and so i do think it's that we're really seeing almost a grouping of those two people being sorted now like the sorting hat people it, it, are choosing it, it, It's funny, even even with Jews, by the way, it's the same thing. Jews also have this relationship to Israel. Yeah, you know, you come here and the other ad- attracted to it and like, you, I, I got to move here or like, I can't stand. I got I to I gotta be far away for 5,000 miles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. We've, we've had a lot of guests on the show here, you know, American Jews who, you know, took their trip to Israel and everybody was like, oh, it's going to be, a, you know, a, a spiritual experience. And they're like, yeah, whatever. And then. This woman was like, yeah, I landed and I was like, I got to move here. <laughs> like, yes. Just, yeah. And, I've and heard so, that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it, It's it's really this, uh, you know, um, it, this sorting thing really does happen. And and we, um, you know, since you brought it up, we can go a step further. This is all part of the this um, process that, that really started a long time ago. We were all, um, and, and Kabbalists write about it. They, like they wrote about it forever. And, and the, the religion wow. that we see today is really just like sort of an, an outer shell of the, that inner um, inner story that we're talking about. And they write about how, yes, humans are egoistic creatures that they were created this way so they, so they can receive pleasure. Creator wants to give pleasure, so it creates something that can receive pleasure. You know it makes perfect sense. But it's a, but you have to receive it in a different way. You have to receive it with a different intention, not just for yourself. Yeah. But, In order to somehow you know give back yes. to you know to to the person to the giver right have a relationship basically right so that's like when you go to your yes. mom when you go to your parents right and uh, you go there and you're already full but they they cook dinner like oh look you, we cooked your favorite thing and you say well what do you say like, no I'm not hungry no so you're gonna eat a little bit right to to just show oh my god thank you oh, you made me this my favorite dish how did you know right you because you want yes. You want to have a relationship with that person. It's not Absolutely. about filling your belly, right? It's about this connection that now starts to happen. So, yeah. so, so and I so, think that's sorry. Yeah, yeah no, no. So so th- this is this is sort of the end game, but not everybody yeah. has um, uh, that that spark from that attitude. Uh, it's kind of buried deep in many people. and some it's more closer to the surface. They're able yeah. to relate to that intention and to say there is something here. We can. We can relate to something higher there's something that's working here yeah and I think um, sometimes I think people actually hide behind religion so they don't have to do that relationship thing because they go through all of the in you know Catholicism and Christianity we call it sacraments or it's it might be the religious process but then there's no spiritual connection with God no relationship. So therefore it's almost dead because all it is 
is just a series of I must do this to appear like I'm doing it, but really there's no heart connection, soul connection. So therefore, what are you doing? You know, because it has to, I think, and this is what I'm very feel convicted about this, is that it has to be a soul spiritual connection. It can't just be, I go to church on a Sunday or, you know, even I go to Friday night service at shul, but I don't really believe or I don't really have any relationship. We have to go further than the um, habit of tradition and push into that relationship like Abraham did since you brought Abraham, he had that relationship, that trust, that crying out to God for a child. He, he had that before the Torah was there, before the rules of um, the sacraments or whatever they're called in Judaism. Um, before that was there, it was all about relationship with the divine. Exactly. And I wonder, why, why are you doing what you're doing? You know what's 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 your reason obviously you're not just going through the and, and are there others like you like do yeah. we you know and uh as we go towards the end times you know what 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 are we what are we up against here no, you know, for, for let's, example, no, let's start for let's start for the positive first let's say you know what, what why are you in this like what what, what i was gonna go straight to i know yeah, yeah, take it over and the, the war is coming <laughs> yeah straight to armageddon you're going straight yeah, there. that's like <laughs> Leo um, and I, one of us is always holding the other one back from going. I like it. Again. I like it. Um, why am I in which part? Where, where do you want me to start? Why am I well, in ev- everything? Uh, you know, everything. The, yeah, everything. You know, the, who, who you are. I mean, you, you, you obviously you strike. We, we feel you. Uh, you have this. Uh, First of all, there's this thing towards God, right? That's clear. Yeah. But then jihadists also have something towards God. So it's a different thing towards God. It's just more like a love thing towards God, yeah. right? And then there's this connection to Israel, which is this other layer. Uh, I think those are two good layers to start with. Okay. And and not only that, and you're on the street about it. So it's not, so so one, you have a relationship with God. Two, you connected it to the Jewish people. And three, you're out there disseminating this message. So yeah. that's, why? 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 Yeah. That's, there's a lot going on right there. Yeah. What's in your heart? My heart, Maybe. look, I, I, I honestly don't believe you can be a true follower of Jesus the Jew if you don't love Israel and the Jewish people. We read and we hold Torah, Tanakh, so precious. And even when people say the Old Testament, which is something I hate using because it makes it seem like that's an old reference book, it's old, and now we have the new Even if you want to call it the old and the new, I call it the first and the second. But even if you say the New Testament is the Christian part, even the Second Testament, the New Testament was written almost exclusively by Jews, except for Luke, who then converted to Judaism. And it was it is a Jewish sect. If you think about every, you know, every kind of anti-Semitic Christian trope, like the Jews killed Jesus, which is not true. Obviously, it was the Romans. The Jews don't crucify or the Jews rejected Jesus. Every single first con- convert was Jewish. And they even when they were choosing their um, their elders um, in the book of Acts, people would convert to Judaism. There was no such thing as converting to Christianity. And I, and I was sitting in a um, summit meeting a few weeks ago with a Christian and he said, look, At the end of the day, Jesus was, you know, Jewish up until the age of, you know, 18 when he converted to Christianity. And I said, okay, let me just stop you there. First of all, if you believe that Jesus is the Messiah and you believe that he died and rose again, in Revelation, the last book of the Second Testament, Jesus, the the risen Jesus self-identifies as Jewish from the house of David, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Absolutely nowhere does it say he's a Christian. If you look at the New Jerusalem that it talks about um, in Revelation, the New Jerusalem, it's called Jerusalem, first of all. And second of all, it says it's built on the 12 patriarchs of Jacob. And so what isn't Jewish about that? Every single Thing that we read is written 
almost exclusively by Jews, for Jews, about Jews in the land of Israel. So, so let me let me ask a little, just shift a little bit, like really boots on the ground. So boots you on the ground. Con- you, have, you have a congregation? Yes. Okay. Um, so does your congregation also support Israel? Because what I see now is that... Um, you know, being against Israel now is kind of political is politically correct. So does yeah. your congregation also what? No, I said it's fashionable. Yeah, very fashionable. Yeah, it's, it's the it's the trend. It's the ice bucket trend. It's like the but the hateful version. Um, our congregation are is you spending 100... a lot of time like a, like trying to explain why we need to support Israel, or they they get it. Our congregation already get it because we didn't start doing this work on October the 8th. We've been doing this for years and years. And so we've already laid the foundations. We've already, we've already taught the congregation things that they didn't even think they, you know, they didn't, they weren't anti-Semitic. They've, we've always been openly um, praying for safety for all Jews in this country and the protection of Israel, not because we want some random prophecy to come to pass, which uh, I met a an Orthodox uh, Jewish man in Israel when I came there in January to do a solidarity trip. And um, he said, do you support Jews because it will make the Messiah come? I said, I didn't even know that was a thing. No, definitely not. And so there's all of these misconceptions about um, Christians, quite rightly, when we look at context and we look at how awful so many Christians have been. But our congregation is amazing. And I'm going to give you an example of of in action, love in action, which I'm very much you can you might be able to talk a good talk. But if you can't act, really, your words are dead. And so we said to our congregation, we've met the local rabbis and we had been working with the rabbis and just meeting them for coffee. My husband had. And we said, look, we really want to bless you. No strings attached. And we want to practically help you. Our scriptures um, tell us because we have been blessed so much and been had have shared so much in the spiritual blessings from the fact that the the Jewish people have bought. We don't have a faith without the Jewish people. There is no Christianity without the Jews at all. And so we said we want to. Our Bible says we need to share our material blessings. Is there anything we can do because we we want to be friends? What can we do? And the rabbi said to us, look, we are struggling to get our kids to school. We've all got loads of children. The school is two hour journey away. So we said, what would be helpful? And they said, well, if someone could drive our kids to school, but there are about um, 12 to 19 children. It's okay. So we went back to our congregation and we said, guys, we want to bless the local Jewish community by taking their rabbi's children to school. And you know how much we love Israel and we love the Jewish people. We are going to, we want to buy a minibus for them and create a rota. But we're not going to brand it with anything. We're not going to even make a big deal out of it. We're not going to let our left hand know what our right hand is doing. Just give without, with no virtual signaling whatsoever. We didn't tell anyone about it. And, um, Our congregation is only about 150 people. And that Sunday, we took a special offering and raised £32,000 and brought a minibus and set up a rotor to take the kids to school. And I'm not saying that to be flexing or virtual signaling in any way. This was years ago. I'm saying that our congregation really does put their money where their mouth is. They truly do stand with Israel. We have all the hostage photo posters, each individual one, all at the back of our church. We have two huge hostage hostage posters right at the front. We have the Magen David Adom. They come in and give us updates on the war. We have other friends besides you and your hundred and twenty something, con- uh, you know, congregants. Are there other friends like you out there? Loads, loads. Really? They just, yeah. They just don't know how to get a good algorithm on the uh, on Instagram and Facebook, but there are there are millions. There's millions, and there are so 
we thought we need to kind of pull everything together. We want the Jewish community to know they are not alone. There are millions of people who stand with them. So we set up this organization, Christian Action Against Antisemitism. And we started pulling in together all of the pro-Israel, Zionist Christians, um, people who just believe in the Jewish people um, and not for any weird reason. And they have all joined our movement and it's global and there's lots and lots of them. This, this is this is really heartwarming. Um, I want to ask a few tough questions, if you don't mind. I love uh, it. But, okay, good. Um, I'm a Maori. We like we we like a bit of uh, yeah, you know. Yeah, okay, I'm not English. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, no, go. I, 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 I get it. Um, so, um, you know, most of the people who listen to the show they're not religious, um, and uh, spe- especially in in the uh, you know in, in Judaism, you have like basically every possible shade, right? You have all kinds, but everyone has some sort of a picture. Of uh, sort of the end of times, where you know the lamb and the uh, wolf, right? This whole—it's basically a vision of peace, okay? And the peace is where all the different pieces that are very different—they they somehow fit together. They don't all become the same, right? Not everybody becomes a sheep or a lamb, but they somehow manage to fit in. Yeah. Um, so th- there's there's some work that's done from you know from below, let's say, and then some work that's done from above, and somehow. This whole system begins to achieve a sense of harmony, but if you read the, you know, if you read into the religious texts of, you know, of the church, for example, they have a slightly different picture of, uh, of the the end game. Uh, so I, how does that, you know, where does it, where does it go, right? And just to make it more difficult, if you look at the picture of the end of times for the Muslims. Most Muslims, uh, even if they're considered moderate, they follow Muhammad, and Muhammad's approach is the way of the sword, of you know, the beheading. There's no, there's no peace and love there. There's only temporary agreements before. And I'm saying it, you know, you know, I, I don't need to preface it by saying, oh, I have some great Muslim friends. Doesn't matter. It's Absolutely. all, it's all, it's all a game of of hide and seek, of bait and switch. That's part of the. The Muslim creed it's 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 built into the religion um, it is so exactly so I'm, I'm asking like a very serious question now even if you took Jews out of the picture they still have the the whole you know turn the other cheek Jesus love thing I'm simplifying on purpose and then this yeah, whole, yeah, yeah it's fine yeah and then this whole uh conversion by the power of the sword on the on the other side how does this how do they they fit and then if you still keep the Jews in the mix, you know, how do those three fit? I mean, there's something in Congress about it on the surface. I, I have a we have a, yeah. an idea, but I'm asking you, what, what do you make of it? Because I sometimes think that people don't think this through all the way. Like, like see what's happening yeah. in Europe right now and what's happening you know, in, as society starts shifting and becoming. Um, well, how do these worldviews, these let's say like. Yeah. Uh, how do they meet Christian? Yeah. Well, I mean, that is a tricky question. I um, told you. <laughs> it's not hard to answer, but it's just about how to answer it is the, is the way. Um, it makes me think, you know, in terms of things fitting together, and I, and I think of a tapestry that you don't, you need every shade to give it life. And you need the dark parts to to denote tone and it fits together as a bigger picture. But in terms of fitting together, in terms of the last days, I do believe in forces that are good and forces that are evil. And from a Christian perspective, which is really the only perspective I can speak from, Jesus said, you will know who are mine by the fruit of their lives. If the fruit of your life is death and beheading and terror that is not from the living loving god that's what i think if the fruit of your life is love and peace and wanting to do good for others preferring others that is the fruit from a good tree 
that's so what, probably so how we I would do have a situation that. okay so we have a situation though that the all-powerful god um uh, is enlivening this other force even if it is the force that okay so you said it really clearly you know from the dark we can see the the you know, we can see the beauty of the art you can't you can't make anything you can't make a good piece of music without tension without silence you can't That's make right. a beautiful piece of art without all the different shades so so there must be this these uh, opposing forces but there also needs to be a, a way that the opposing forces can come together um because from our perspective uh, we have this uh kind of fundament well uh, in very uh, colloquial language, that there is nothing that's outside of the realm of God or outside of the realm of, mm -hmm. of, of nature. So if these are real forces, meaning you know billions of people that are looking to take over the world, and on the other side, you have billions of people who presumably are saying, you know, turn the other cheek, love your neighbor as yourself. So how do these, I think I'm just asking Leo's question again, what's the end game? in the, in there well the end game is is um it not everything ends well for everybody um that's and and i think because my reference has to be the bible it has to be the going into the torah and there were always enemies of the light and it did never end ended well for them and so this is the only i always use biblical principle in everything although god is a loving god he does give us choice and if we make bad choices there is a consequence if i tell my child don't touch the fire as much as i love my child if he touches the fire he will get burnt and god presents us in life paths and choices and it's up to us to choose and if we choose the park path of death and destruction and terror the consequence will be reaping a harvest of death, destruction and terror. So in terms of the, the I think there are, and I don't even want to say winners and losers. It, it's, it's not like that, but there's consequence. I'm, so I'm, I, curious, I, I'm curious. I'm cutting you off. Um, I apologize, but uh, for a good reason. I'm curious if you can tell us uh, what do people in power, um, you know, political power, corporate power, media power, wh what do they make of it? Like, do, do people consider those things at all? I'm, I'm really curious because yeah. it seems like people are making choices that are going against their, their best interests in, 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 in some way. And like, I'm, I'm curious, you know, you, you side, you know, you take sides, you, you play, try to play God a little bit, you throw money this way, that way. But it seems like a lot of the stuff that's happened that's coming out of the you know progressive left kind of seeks mm -hmm. to undermine the, the the foundation of society. Same thing that's coming out of the 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 extreme um, Muslim side seems to undermine the society. Like I'm I'm curious, are people seeing this? Because it doesn't feel no, like it. it, it so... I don't think they are. I don't think they are. And and I don't want to even come across like it's an arrogant point of view that I think that because some people have God, then it's all okay for them and everyone else is, you know, it's death and destruction. I don't mean it like that. I think that really um, we do have a society, if we take it back to, especially from what I believe, is is godless. And going back to Abraham, he was an, it was an unusual people. It was a, the righteous always stood alone. It was the Noah who was shouting at everyone, warning everyone, and no one wanted to listen. It's the same pattern of humanity. And we're seeing it over and over again, that the righteous or the people who want to stand with God always feel like the lone voices and no one else is listening. That's what it feels like from the Noah's, from the you know even elijah and all of the prophets they were always saying guys this is not right we need to get connected back into the into god we need to get back into that but most people uh, don't seem interested unless they've been brought up or they have an 
an epiphany don't really seem like they are interested in having a relationship with the divine. That it's means right. that costs anything, that costs something. They like to control it, which is why I think we see an increase in um, people that are dabbling in the occult. There's a lot of um, you know people that like to dabble in the occult now because it's a form of spiritualism that gives them access to a potential divine but no submission to rules and regulations so, if that makes sense no it, it makes it makes some sense I, I you know I, I would say that people are are seeking all kinds of forms of control trying to get more control into their own hands where, where clearly mm. the the solution is is uh, lies at least in in our mind is like okay the result what we're seeing here is a result of too much control into the hands of the human ego i'm doing yeah. I'm controlling i'm ruling i'm in charge i know what i'm doing we're clearly we don't know what we're doing i mean at, at least we can we can we can at least admit that we, we screwed up in a few places right ecology yeah, economy education commerce politics i mean it's seemingly we have everything right we have all the, the ingredients of an amazing world but we kind of messed it up so yes. uh right so 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 clearly there's need there's a need for something else but it's hard for people who are not who didn't grow up as believers to even of with this this kind of this to even entertain it i mean if, if you talk to someone secular in israel as you said no one is perfect not, not you know no one country everybody's seeing the same thing but people are so uh they're so uh afraid of this concept that there's somehow something that they cannot see maybe there's a bigger picture maybe there are other forces that they can't see that are moving things and they have to somehow relate to them in a way and it, it freaks them out you know yeah we, of course and I were all, totally get it you know we, we, we didn't grow up in a, in a religious environment we didn't we weren't like fed this this ideology when we were kids to then you know recite it when we were older no we're we're trying to come to grips with this uh you know, with with this question of of how how to how to relate to these things, and I'm I'm, I'm curious how how do we move this picture in the in the right direction against I all think, these odds? <laughs> uh, I know. I think that we have to um, be very kind, and we have to be very loving, and we have to be very understanding and compassionate. And, and I know that I seem I might seem like I've got this hard line of opinion of 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 what I think about everything, but I also mix that in with with compassion and understanding that not everybody does have that, and that's okay too. And I and I therefore I just think that if we are all just being patient and loving and kind, it helps people to get closer to that end goal of wanting something else and this is what happens with me anyway and many people that I speak to they're around someone and they're like what is it about you that you just there's something about you what is it and then you can have this conversation if if that's going to go there but I think it's important not to push they're just on the back seat sorry I, I kicked everyone out, I was kicked everyone out of the car for, <laughs> yeah, for we, this we, we, yeah, and no, now we, they've been you know, we're aware that we're also, you know, um, so last question, um, are you, do you think that people who have that desire for good, um, for that good connection, um, for revealing this quality of love between people, uh, are they also willing to fight for it if need be? Because sometimes people are like, no, I, I'm willing to, to do the love and acceptance. I don't want to harm anyone. Whereas the other side, for example, is not a problem, you know? Yeah. Well, clearly we can see that some people can fight for it and there's lots of people calling for intifada all over the world. Oh, I'm, Not, I'm talking about the other think... side. No, I'm talking about the other side. The side oh, as thinks. in... Yeah, like, like you. Are, are you, are you. Like in... me. Am I willing yeah. to fight for what I believe? Yeah, for this love. Can we can we be for love and still fight if we have to, if we get called to? So you could jump in behind it. It depends well, why we're called to. Um, I would always, I would defend somebody else, but um, in terms of, I think it depends on the circumstance. It's all contextual. You know, if someone broke into my house and tied my kids up and said, you have to convert, would I fight? I would. 
Um, I, I think it's a hard question to answer. Okay, so listen, but, you, you but have I external... Think you fight for it. No, you, have, you, have, you have external uh, conditions right now. Which no, 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 no finish, finish, finish your thought. Hold on, finish uh, okay. your thought. Finish your thought. Um, I think that you have to fight for your freedom and your the love. Can I just, can you just... Yeah, sorry, it's just because my car is now, everyone's jumped in, they're fed up of waiting in the um, KFC. <laughs> you guys are amazing. I mean, we were so grateful. You, you, no, you, you really have to fight and you have to, I don't know, fighting's the right word. It, actually, it is because sometimes you have to fight temptation. You have to fight laziness. You have to fight the natural um, self that just doesn't want to do things at a certain time because another part of yourself is warring internally with I don't want to do that even though I know it's right to do it but I want to do the wrong thing so that I think there's always an internal conflict and an internal battle that you are always fighting so yes definitely I would fight for this I do fight for it whether I would then take up arms it would depend on context does that help I don't know if I've answered it well <laughs> It, oh, I've answered it anyway as well as I can right now. Being this... Yeah, yeah, no, no, this this has been great. Uh, Reverend Haley, I'm, we're so happy that you took the time to, to speak to us. Um, even I'm, I'm, these... I'm happy to keep on going as long as you don't mind that I'm going to be driving. But um, it's been so lovely to be with you guys. Let, let's uh, let's let's find another time when um, when we can get in a little like a little messier about some of these things because yeah. there's a lot you know we found even just the way you opened up there's a lot of common ground and uh, there then there's you know more and more layers that would like to open up about. We really look at what's going on now as very existential. It's not just like another news story. It's not just another period where this is historical. This historical time, there's a time 100%. that's been prophesized about. This is a time that's been written about from the beginning yeah. of these books. And, and, uh, and it's not just moral or ethical or, you know, you know, social yeah. correctness. It's, it's way bigger somehow than all it, those it things. It is. And I yeah. and I absolutely believe that. I, I believe that we are in the end of the end of the end days. Uh, I always think, are we going to hear start a, you know news of the Messiah coming? You know, I really do think this is the end of the end of the end. You, and you, so it would be great to peel back the onions and yeah. get messy. Yeah, yeah. With the we're, chat, we're, yeah. We're, we're we're with you. We're with you. Um, I, yeah. I you know, uh, you I guys think, are great. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> you too. Okay. Uh, All actually, right. So get wherever you're going safely. I was confused. I thought you, but you're in England. So you're on the other side. You're not driving. I was yeah. like, how is she driving and also looking at, in the camera? But yeah. No, okay. no, no, no. Yeah. Magic. It's a it's Christian a thing. thing. It's a Christian thing. We can, uh... <laughs> no, um, thank you so much. God bless okay. you guys. And I really, you know, look forward to us and I will be in front of my screen so that we can really, you know, pick it all apart. I would love that. Sure, sure, sure. There's, there's, places to go and uh and and and, and we found a friend leo to awaken yeah so reverend yeah. haley thank you so much thank uh, your dear family for uh for their patience uh and uh okay. we uh we thank everyone who's following the true function uh, i think we have another uh, another uh, important member of our circle uh amazing i would love that yeah. yes moving, thank moving you towards love yes that's that's what we're all about yeah that's beautiful Okay, take care, guys. Take bye, care. Lots Thank of you love. so much. We'll yeah. talk soon. Bye bye. We will. Bye bye. So that was that. That was wild, Seth. That was like. <laughs> are you are you still on live? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. We're just we're just closing the show. That's fine. oh okay okay. I thought you were going off live, and I was just gonna chat. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, so hold on. So turn off your camera. We'll send everyone off, and then we'll chat for another minute. So, okay, perfect. Uh, everyone, so this is uh, the Jew function, and uh, like, follow, subscribe everywhere. Uh, you know, everywhere you see us on Instagram, on Facebook, on X, on YouTube, soon on TikTok. Uh, there's more good stuff coming. Uh, we have another, uh, uh, well, more recorded stuff coming up, and another show next Sunday. And not next Sunday, the Sunday after. So stay tuned and uh, help us find the function of the Jews. Take care.
and let me just end the broadcast goodbye oh i'm right. sorry guys i'm sorry